Hi, I'm Bruce Kanawala, Director of Culinary Arts for Schoolcraft College. Our program is known nationally and internationally. What you're about to what see... What you're about to see is a behind-the-scenes look at our culinary arts program. So you want to be a chef? Ron Thomas. Ron. Okay, I'm just going to get names and faces here as we go along. Arthur Maddox. Yes, Arturo, as is affectionately known in the business. Arturo, right? All right, we got a short, small class today, so we're going to get started because we got a lot of stuff to cover. Now, in many cases, when you're making these dressings, you can pretty much throw them all in there, and you can pretty much bring it all up. Oh, here he comes, Leon. Should we lock the door? Or should we let him in? He saw us and he ran away. And I want you to know that we're capturing the fact that you're coming in late. This is live. I was in the bathroom. I was late. <laughs> you don't mind if I play off you guys a little bit, do you? All right. The first part, basically the first week, is pretty much myself showing them and, and, and pretty much lecturing and doing a show and tell concept with them. I'll take each of the elements that I think are critical points that they need to really observe and know and perform those for them. All right, now, what are we calling this salad? It's called a grilled chicken salad, right? Okay. We want to focus on what we're calling this. So we want this to be the focal point, right? So we want to maybe slice this so that we can allow for more of the exposure of this product. So whenever you do that, you want to make sure your slices are in such a way that you'll be able to. Wow. 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 So what happens here is I begin to see this thing develop and what's happening is now, hey, I know that's grilled chicken, right? Right? No? Yes? Hello? Thank you. All right. The students come in and they pick up uh, all of the elements of pantry, which, are, which would include salad dressings, working with lettuces, working with various different types of sandwiches, and getting all of the garnishes and the components put together and understanding how those components work. And that's, that's how they work the pantry part. The breakfast part of it, um, it helps to develop their skills and, the, and their quickness. Because it, with breakfast, it's not a start-stop type cooking method. You have to start and finish for all of it right away. So they develop a lot of their speed and their skills with the breakfast part of it, which is very helpful when they're getting out into the industry. The last four weeks is when they are in, in the fire, so to speak, and they're in the kitchens, performing all of those objectives that I showed them in the first week. Well then, what, if you're going to do the, what we'll do is we'll, we'll try put you right onto the hot sandwiches today. Okay. We'll do the hot uh, croque monsieur. Okay. You know, you got to get your white pan bread, make get the slices, get that little thin slate layer of mustard mayo, and then when you set these up, and we'll kind of follow up what I was telling Ron yesterday is where when you get when you get your, all your mise en place lined up, let me know and I'll show you how to go through the construction of it to make it real simple and easy, and make sure we get that coverage on there because it's important that we. And it make sure that cheese melts around that meat so it keeps it airtight to a degree. So you need to have mushrooms. And we should have some demi left over from yesterday. And basically, you'll, do we have, we have some like, great. Thin slice some mushrooms, saute them. And you can even add a little bit of shallot in there if you'd like. 
and then we'll add the demi, allow that to reduce so it begins to fortify, and it gives us a nice sheen, and there's some fresh chopped chives. So you get the bread, the mustard mayo, the ham, the Swiss cheese, and then we've got those, uh, those marinated vegetables that we did yet still. So, and the peppers, the onions, let's get those out, and the mushrooms, and then we'll start doing a little bit of a nice side garnish with all of our uh, sandwiches today. And we also have some um, cornichons, the little baby uh, pickles. And then Chef Chris made uh, some fresh dill pickles. If you look on the hotline, you know on the far left hand side where the potatoes are, there's two containers sitting up there. We made some fresh dill pickles. So we'll take a couple of those and we'll use some of those as garnishes today. Okay. All right? All right, Leon, where are we at? Well, I'm getting ready to start my, um, I've got, my, I've got the, um, Grease cakes already prepped. Um, just portioning out the um, for the over yeah, corned beef hash. Good beef formation. Cash. They look good. Are you going to be doing those on your flat grill? Um, the, um, or are you going to do them in a pan? I, um, I might. I just. I think I'm going to do the um, the grits and the um, hash on the grill. But I'm definitely going to egg your pan. Okay. All over easy. Yes. Now are you cutting your eggs out? You're putting any kind of a sauce over the top of those? Um, yes, there's a leaf bechamel I can use, and I have some chives left. Beautiful. Okay. You're all set then? Yes, sir. All right, good. All right, I can go take a nap now. Call, okay. call me when everything's ready. All right, sir. <laughs> the students will rotate each day into a new station, and each of those stations have certain objectives that they have to complete. And they'll spend two weeks on egg cookery, then they'll take, spend two weeks or breakfast and egg and breakfast cookery, as well as two weeks then on salads and sandwich section. We have a basic common ground when we start. And then from there, I give them a basic understanding of that these are the levels that they need to achieve if they want to do well. So, and I expect that they all will do well. So I put that level pretty high. And uh, if there's an issue where it's not, they're not quite achieving that, then I'll delve into it and find out why and if there's some support that needs to be given, then we find it for them. But we usually put a pretty high expectation on them. The, and the reason for that is because the industry is going to expect it. And we can't allow them to be, uh, to go out into the industry if we don't give them the proper training to be able to support their uh, actions out there. What I want to do here is first and foremost is every time you start to make an omelet, it starts from here first, okay? So if you notice, I want you to vigorously whip these so that you get a full blend okay. of the egg whites and the egg yolks. And can I, where you got, can I borrow your rubber spatula there? Now, introduction. Now see the foam on the top there? You want to see that every time you go in there. Now, before you even start to work on this, you want to allow the egg to set. I'll turn this up just a hair. All right. I don't want to start scrambling or moving the eggs at all until I see a solid form set. It's still not quite ready yet. We just turn the heat up a little bit. At this point, because what, what that'll do is we're, we're starting to coagulate the egg. I mean, our temp is coming up to about 100 and... 40? A little bit higher. No, about 145 degrees. It's fully coagulated 159 degrees, right? So we don't, we're looking to try and get that coagulation sense in there so that we can get that, when it, we start to scramble, it sets. We're actually developing a curd, kind of like cottage cheese. Okay. See that? Just starting to know. So see there? I got a little bit of a set there. So it's no problem. See, I got these, let it set. And then see this way, by the scrambling method, What's going to happen is we're going to allow that heat to transfer through, and this will actually start. See how fast it's starting to cook now? Yes, now you want to cook this like it's almost two thirds. Hold on, hold on. You're not quite ready yet. The watch here. Now, oh, your, your water's going. See this? I just kind of do this. Uh -huh. Work it in there. And what happens is now, pull it off the fire. I got this spread going. And technically, it's almost cooked. See there? I still have heat transferring through there. 
Check all the edges. See how much quicker that was? Yeah. Now, go ahead and put your fillings in there. Right. And again, remember, taking it from here, I want to get this over. See that? Mm -hmm. Look at the color. No brown, no white stripes, no white streaks from the egg whites. Set this up like this. Bring it down here, where you got it coming out. There you go. All right? All right. Smooth. Now, the beauty of that is I don't have to go underneath the salamander because I brought enough heat up through into the eggs so they coagulated, and by rolling them, that heat continues to internalize, so by the time I cut this in half, set it out there, it's fully cooked. Okay. All right? All right. Okay, next one's on you. Out of this rotation, I like the, probably the breakfast pantry, just because I learned more. I was not a breakfast person. I, I couldn't cook French toast, and in that class, I learned a lot. I learned more than I ever thought I would know. Okay, guys, it's uh, 7.30. All right, do you know how your mise en place is going? 7.30. We're going to be ready to go by five minutes to eight. Are you worried, Tahita? You are worried? Why? You ready to roll? 7.30. How are we looking here? 7.30. You guys ready to go? Yeah? Are you ready? Okay. Show? Yes. Get a quart of uh, buttermilk over here and give me a rubber spatula or a wooden spoon, either one, and we'll just get this a little, the texture back down a little thinner, and that's all you need to do. Because okay. you can see on your, on your grill, it's staying up there more, uh, more on a cake form. We need that, there's no spread on it. So we just need to get a little bit more. See here, this is. This is not bad, don't get me wrong, it's nice, but see there's, there's virtually no spread there. Yeah. And you need to have that come out a little bit. So all we need to do really is just take a little more buttermilk, thin the batter down just a little bit, and you'll be in good shape. Okay, so if you get some, I'll work with you on that. All right, you see that? Not trying to break it down too much, just leaving that a little bit loose. Yeah, you got, uh, did you make a double batch of each one? Or is this a regular yeah, batch? just the regular one okay. time the recipe, but I have two. See how it pulls in? Your liquid, that extra liquid there, it's folding in. Yeah. Give me just a little bit more. Right in the middle. More, 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 Good. Thank you. All right. There's nothing really wrong with that pancake at all, as you can see. But if you want that kind of a cake, you can see here, it's beautiful. It's still, yeah. It's got a nice aeration through there and a jump. You caught it. This will just give you a little more run. You're fine. It's actually quite good. Breakfast and pantry, you know, we always had our buffet, which always had omelets and usually a souffle omelet. Um, eggs over easy, of course, you know, like eggs benedicts, you know, pancakes and your crepes. And, um, but the other part of it was like a lot of salads, like grilled chicken salads with, you know, roasted bell peppers or um, Dagwood sandwiches, you know, like the big, how to describe it, like the big uh, shaggy sandwiches, you know, the big thick layers. and. You know, a lot, of, a lot of grilled things, I mean, it's, it's fun. I mean, you can, salads are a cool thing that you can incorporate your own personality into, your own colors, your own textures, you know what I mean? It's, so there's a lot of things you can do, especially when making dressings and your own vinaigrettes. It it's a, it, it's allows you to be creative. So, is salmon left over or no? Okay. I'm styling. Containers, lettuce, salmon, asparagus, or I'm sorry. Arthur's going to do that? Chicken, all right. Well, I'm glad you got me under control here. I'm glad somebody knows what, 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 what You're doing... They're dressing. 
Well, there's only one dressing to yeah. make, right? Uh, make an apple cider. And then you can do the salmon salad. Okay. And then you can do the grilled chicken salad. Once we get those two done, then we can move on to that special salad that I, I need made for today. So if you're going to do the grilled chicken, that means that you need the shaved fennel, the sun-dried tomatoes, a little Parmesan dressing, and also, as a matter of fact, did I, I gave you a dress, uh, a recipe for a um, uh, sun-dried tomato dressing, didn't I? Check it out, see if we got it. I'd like to make that today to go with the chicken salad. Okay, the grilled chicken. Green beans, both kinds, there's uh, green and yellow beans in it. Exactly, blanch those off. Make sure you got some shaved fennel, toasted pine nuts. Remember the croutons where we take the French bread, bias cut it, lightly toast it, and sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top and then melt that. That'll be a, a, a fruit style garnish for the salad. So you got them all? Copacetic? Good. You're all set then on the yes, salmon? Sir. Yes, sir. Great. Well, and well, first, yeah. All right. That's true. He will, I hope. Because, you know, he's. He's been kind of territorial lately. You know, he's been not sharing with us ideas much lately, so. <laughs> Gordon, can I her Art, Arturo, excuse me. Peratemi monte, momento, por favor, Arturo. Grazie, molto bene, baby. Yeah, that too, yeah, ciao, baby. All right, these are two flip-flops, all right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll do the one, and we'll give you the ice, the, the mise en place from that point on, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now here, we should take your chicken. Do you have a small spatula I can get up under? Right here. Can I borrow your knife just for a second? Thank you, Art. So this is what I wanted to try and do, is assemble this less, fewer slices, and we could angle them, and we get a little bit better turn on those. See, that's where I'm trying to get that, like this, and like this. And see, if I were able to take that and slice that more on a bias, I get more of a surface area, and it's easier to handle, all right? Uh, crouton? Crouton. Oh, thanks. Uh, I got the one cheesy crouton. One cheesy crouton coming up. So I use this to kind of build up onto coming down. So I have a nice, now, remember we, we talked about those strong lines? Yes. See, and that's kind of going in a half moon shape. That's what I'm looking for there. Now these, do you have a little dressing for those? A little cup? Here. We have to marinate, and you have a little red onion, remember? Take a few of these, put a little dressing on those. We're ready to go. The fennel needs to be shaved a lot finer, real fine. Remember we talked about putting it on a mandolin? But this is okay, now I need a little dress. Where's your, uh, do you have a little uh, vinaigrette? Red wine vinegar? Do you have any red wine vinaigrette here? And if you could grab me, uh, Andre, give me a little red onion, okay? See how you got a nicer spread on those? That's good. Feel better? Yeah. <laughs> Why were you worried to begin with? I mean, really? Huh? No. What? You got three minutes. Three minutes. Grits? Grits oh, well, let's taste your, we got spoons? Uh, that's, I, I got some. Uh-huh, these need to cook a little bit more. Okay, but we're real close, we're close. I just gotta cook more. How's your oatmeal? Ready. Yeah. Whole meal's fine. Just gotta cook your grits a little bit longer. Are you gonna fold a little cheese in the grits? No yet. No yet? Uh, no or yes? Uh, not yet. Oh not yet. Oh, okay. Alright. Uh, and then what are you gonna put at the bottom of your pan for your pancakes? Sugar. Do you guys get any tasting spoons? Vinaigrette. Oh, you got some vinaigrette too. All right. Beautiful. I use your vinaigrette. I like yours better. Beautiful. 
Now remember, one of the other things too, as we talked about, was we want to give each one, what is the function of a compound salad or composed salad? Flavor. For a flavor, absolutely, flavor. But what, what, where does the flavor become important? Uh, different components. All right, so what was one of the criteria for a composed salad? Make sure you have too much of the same color. That's one. Each of the items can stand alone if they're held separate, right? Yes. All right, that's one of them. Now, and the fact is that, put a little on there. Is each of these units, now if I wanted to just eat that chicken breast because we seasoned it, marinated it, grilled it, right? So it could stand alone. The crustad, the crustad, cheese, seasoned cheese, it can stand alone. All of the items that we have on here are basically elements that will be able to stand alone if we wanted to just take each part away from each other, right? right. That's the whole focus of what we're trying to do here. And then here, remember, we talked about taking these and just setting out. Let's take a little of our contrasting color of lettuce, set that underneath there. So that becomes more of a focal point on the green beans, right? Right. A little seasoning here. All right. We talked about strong lines, weak lines. We got a nice line here, natural movement here. And what are the other, oh, our fennel. Now, again, the same thing here. We need to put this in our other dressing. Do we have another dressing? Yeah. Take the same thing. Just a, do you have any uh, salt down there, gentlemen? All right, beautiful. I want everything. So when I bite into the salad, Every part I taste has got its own flavor profile. I don't have to worry about it trying to meld or blend or be bland or anything else like that. And then we try, then the, then the beautiful part about this is that we're gonna try and make all these flavors taste as one. I mean, that work well together. Try and make all of these components work so that they're all part of the salad together, all right? Then we have a little bit of our sun-dried tomato. Pom pom pom, toasted pine nuts, and then our dressing. All right, I need another spoon. All right, toasted pine nuts. Voila, there's your salad. It's all right? So then the red onions, we talked about taking and, and dicing those up. When we marinate these, we put a little red onion in there because it's a nice contrast color, plus the onion flavor will lend to differentiate that from the fennel and everything else. It's all right? Make it happen, my friend. It's all yours. Our primary grading goes starts like this. We look for sanitation, safety, how they set up their mise en place, which is all their, their, their goods that they're gonna need, equipment and food-wise, and how that's set up, how they work, and the flow of their work. Is it choppy or is it fluid? Are they starting and stopping? Are they thinking? And one of the things that we'd like to see is that critical thinking developed by them and knowing what, what has to be done first, prioritizing their workload so that they don't stop and say, oh, it's time to grade the hash browns, but I forgot to cook the potatoes. So the, I look at those elements, and then those are objectives that are set up for each of the stations, and it's a checklist. Well, did they do this, they do this, they do this. And then, obviously, the last and, la and final chapter of the grading process is how well do they cook.
skillet I had in the, in the oven. Uh -huh. I didn't know it was hot. First time ever using the skillet to bake. All eyes are on you, Thornton. All eyes. The eyes of the world are watching. Boy, look at you. Stellar, stealth, non-committal, tuning out, focusing. Can't even get you to make a schmirk on your face. You can make cakes, thicker cakes with these, and make thinner ones with those. So you got a choice. <laughs> okay. All right, I use a lot of humor. Um, I like to try and allow the students to relax when they're working and have, enjoy it. I think that when you enjoy learning, you learn better, you learn quicker. Uh, it stays with you longer. So I try and create an environment where it's a, it, it, I use the term fun, but with the reality that there's an expectation or there's an outcome that you have to fulfill. So there has to be a sense of urgency that always has to be applied, but you can always apply that while you're smiling. And that's pretty much in a nutshell how I like to teach. Zimau Reese. Got the egg in there? Yes. It's good. Well, you guys are nailing these today. Wow. You guys are really nailing them today. Isn't it nice to know it makes it your job easier? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. You guys, of course, I don't know if it's me or it's the camera crew, though. As soon as the camera crew showed up this morning, you guys have been, like, on fire. And I don't know. I got I to gotta have these people come back every day. On the next, here. so you okay. want to be a chef. The next test is the smell test, and the best way to do it is to smell in this gill, uh, where the gills originally were, because that's where the contamination source um, occurs first. A lot of times, when you get fish like this, you notice that when they eviscerated this, they didn't cut it all the way through. Let's take a knife and finish that process.